Hi everybody, how you doing today? Conference going good so far? Can you hear me? I can sure hear me. All right, uh, so my name is Bill Howard. I'm a product manager at Adobe. I'm responsible for uh, Flash runtime, so that's Flash Player Air, uh, something new called the Gaming SDK, which we're going to talk about. Um, I've been doing this for about 18 months, uh, so had a lot of stuff going on in the Flash world, as you can imagine, over the last 18 months. It's been pretty exciting. My contact information is there. Well, okay, my Twitter information. Uh, at Bill at Adobe. If you want to get a hold of me, it's bhoward at adobe.com. I should have put it up there. I didn't, but I think you can write that down. bhoward at adobe.com. Um, so today's session, we're going to talk about building Flash games to the Adobe Gaming SDK. Now, this session is going to be a bit technical. I'm going to jump into some code. Um, I do have, what, two, two sessions, I guess, much like uh, Brett did in the last one. Um, and we are going to jump into a little bit of code about uh, 10 minutes in, 15 minutes into this. Uh, so uh, hopefully that's okay with you. Uh, we're, we'll show you how to get started in a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> first, I want to I want to understand a couple of things from you guys. So, if I could have a show of hands, who who in the room sort of their primary job is a, as a developer who writes code? Okay, so roughly half. What about like designer, game designers? Okay, some of you do both. That's cool. All right, now have you used Flash, Error, ActionScript? Anything like that. Okay, so I've got a bunch of folks who are comfortable with Flash. You probably know way more about coding in it than I do, so if I do something wrong, okay, don't let me know it. Uh, well, you can tell me afterwards. All right, um, so today, what are we going to learn? We're going to learn a little bit about the current state of Flash and Air. All right, where, where are we at? What's the runtime roadmap? I've got a couple of things to tell you, which should be, should be good. Uh, what's the gaming, what is the gaming SDK? Uh, it's something new we put together. We're going to define it a little bit, make sure you know what that is. Uh, and we're going to then just jump right into the basics of building a game with the gaming SDK. So we're going to look at the code. We're going to use some of the tools from Adobe. We're going to use, I'm going to jump into Flash Pro. We're going to go into Flash Builder. And we're going we're gonna to put together a game and put it up on the screen. And, and hopefully, if, if I do my job right, it'll run on the screen and you can see it. And you should learn something. So, but the first thing I got to do is ask a question, right? So true or false? You can run Flash content at near native speeds on iOS devices. Who says false? OK, that's good. Who says true? Oh, a lot of unsure people out there. Um, so the answer is yes, you can. The, it's a trick question a little bit, because you can't run famous uh, argument or f famous Steve Jobs thing, right? Flash doesn't work on an, on an iPad. Flash player doesn't work on an iPad. That's in the browser. Flash Player, as you guys know, is a plug-in for a browser. And they don't let you on Safari, on iOS devices, have any kind of plug-in. So the Flash Player itself will not run. You can't go into content, can't go to congregate on your browser and hit the Flash, Flash games on there. It just won't work. Um, however, as a Flash developer, you can take your Flash content and put your Flash content on iOS devices, on Android devices, and, and run them as apps. And we use that through our packaging technology called Air. But Air is really nothing more than Flash running in an app. Okay? So if you're a Flash developer, you can do that. And there's uh, the near native speed is a bit of a, 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 a tricky one as well. I'm going to talk about how you do that today. That's using, it, using some of our uh, newer technology. Um, so again, you know, basically, you can reuse your ActionScript code without any friction. So ActionScript 3 is our language. Uh, you can use that between your desktop, Flash Player, Air on the desktop. We also have the ability to create an application on the desktop. So your game can run as an app on the desk that people can download desktop from, I don't know, the, the, um, the uh, Mac App Store. You can get games off of that. That could be written in, in Air or Flash technology. Uh, you, can, you can run them on the browser within Flash Player, of course. And you can use that same code and also put them on iOS and Android. Um, and, and so I, I show you it there, Android, iOS, also Flash Player for desktop browsers. We've got Win8 support. One bit of information you probably know is that Win8, Windows 8, the, the plugin that's supported on Windows 8 is Flash Player. So we've completely written Flash Player to be compatible with Windows 8. It ships with Windows 8. So when you go and launch a Windows 8 machine, you're going to get Flash Player. It comes with it. Updates to the system are all done through Windows Update. So it's actually part of the operating system of Windows. 
And, and when, by the way, when that first came out, there was this thing called a blacklist. I don't know if you've heard of the CV. You guys know what that is? Yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry, you don't need to know what it is anymore. It's gone. And now it's, uh, it's, it's complete, it was a white list. It used to be Flash content by default wouldn't run unless you submitted it to Microsoft and Microsoft judged your Flash content to be wonderful. And then they would say, we approve, give it the stamp of approval, and then it would run in Windows 8. They realized that all the content was great, they didn't have any issues, and so they, they just made it a blacklist. So your content should run on Windows 8 without any problem. Now, the, the important thing here is that we introduced with Flash Player 11 a new technology called Stage 3D. Anybody know what Stage 3D is? Okay, there's a handful of you that you do. Um, Stage 3D is basically, it's a bad name. Now, I wasn't there and they named it, okay? But it's a bad name. Stage 3D does not mean necessarily three-dimensional content. Really, it's about GPU acceleration. So we now have a mechanism within Flash by, by which you can, you can build your content and take advantage of the GPU for accelerated content, right? So rather than running everything on the CPU, you can direct that content out to the GPU. Now that's specialized development, for those of you that know how to do it. Um, and we've we created a special language called AGAL, which takes care of all the differences across all the different browser, different technologies out there from DirectX 11, DirectX 9 to OpenGL ES. One language supports all of it. You can get it in Flash Player and Air everywhere. Uh, and that's what's really been a big boon to being able to develop something and get it performant on all these devices. So if you want to get your content, if it's a Flash game that you've created and you're not using Stage 3D, you might struggle with some of the performance of that um, because of the, the limitations of the CPU on some of the devices like an iPad or some of the older, uh, older iOS devices or Android devices. But with, if you convert the content to use Stage 3D, excuse me, you'll be able to then be, be able to get better, much better performance and near native speed. Um, I think this might play a, play a video, which I forgot about. Sorry for those of you in the back. Or sorry for the tech guys who asked me if I had video. There's something playing here. We won't go through it all. But, but effectively, the, uh, we, we today have over 25,000 apps that are currently on the iOS app store and Google Play that are all mostly, I think, I think it's stats around 90% of everything created for Flash and Air actually end up being a game. And that content is, is all out there. We, we have uh, a tremendous amount of apps being uploaded every month. And the, the actual number of apps, the growth, the number of new apps every month has grown by 60% since this time last year. So we're seeing a lot of additional activity. This is a video of some of the different apps that are out there. I'm going to move on though. Um, so something else that's important to know about Flash Player, we're on a regular cadence. I don't know if you've, you probably haven't noticed. Has Flash Player ever asked you to update? Yeah, I would imagine it has. Uh, if you're using Chrome, it's shipped with it. So you're, you're not going to get a request there to update. But every quarter, we release new versions of Flash Player. We're continuing to release new versions of Flash Player and Air with new capabilities, new features, and functionalities. So every three months, you're going to have new features to use as a developer um, in that the, uh, way, the way our development, the way our releases go, we have, let's see, what was the number last I heard? 600 and over 600 million people in the world have chosen to automatically update their Flash Player every time we put an update. So you can think of, you know, there's something, there's more than half of the population of all the, of all of the uh, Flash players out there uh, actually has the latest version of Flash Player. So Flash Player 11.8 as of today. Um, Sorry, 11.7 and 8's coming. So another thing, beta programs out there. So if you want to build for Flash, go to the beta program, labs.adobe.com, download the latest one. And we update that regularly. So you get the latest Flash player. You can test your content, make sure it's running there. Uh, and, and give us feedback if there's an issue. We have a roadmap that's publicized around Flash player and, and Flash platform. Uh, and the gaming SDK, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, is also part of that quarterly release cycle falls just after. So with every quarter, we'll, we'll update that. Um, we've had a bunch of recent updates, some things like Android Captive Runtime Debugging, Ouya, you guys familiar with the Ouya device? Yeah, so the, the little, uh, little cubey thing that you hook to your TV and you got uh, gamepad controllers for it, it'll play Android, Android games. Um, we have support for that, so the Ouya is fully, con the controller is fully out there. Uh, we also have a bunch of additional features. One, one thing that's pretty interesting is 16-bit texture support to be able to allow you where it's necessary to reduce the texture size, improve your performance. Things that are coming. 
Um, you can read this list. I'm going to focus on a couple that I think are pretty important. Gamepad support. So one of the things that's not been possible is on Flash Player to actually hook up like an Xbox 360 controller. So in our next release, you will have uh, the next beta, in fact, that comes out, which is in next week. You'll be able to hook up an Xbox 360 controller to your computer and can program your game to be controlled by that controller. We'll support direct, uh, sorry, direct X input, X input devices on Windows. That same controller can be used on a Mac. So you can now have your, your players in the world actually not just use a keyboard, but if you wanted to, you could have them use a gamepad and actually control that. Um, we're increasing the maximum texture size to 4096 by 4096, four devices that'll support that size of texture. We are adding rectangular textures, datagram servers, a bunch of stuff. Um, one thing that's important that I don't list here, but we are actually looking to improve the uh, compile time and file size on iOS. So all that's, that's being worked on. You should shortly see some big improvements in that space as well. Uh, so what are the game developer, Adobe Game Developer tools? Uh, on the left-hand side, we have the ability, we talk about the ability to create your content, you can extend your reach, and then you can profile that content. So we have the gaming SDK, which is what I'm going to really talk about uh, this whole left side. I'm going to briefly touch on Adobe Scout on the left side. Adobe Scout on the right side there for profiling. Has anyone used Scout yet? A couple? How do you find it? Useful? Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's a product that has a lot of, a lot of popularity. Uh, it really helps you find what's going on in your code and opens up the box and lets you really see what's going on in there. I'll show it to you before we're done here today. Um, the gaming SDK Flash Builder and Flash Pro on the left are all about creating Flask. Uh, is going to be open source shortly, so we're going to put that out on the open source. So if you're interested in that product, you'll also be able to contribute to it. We're also upgrading it as we go put it into open source. But that's the ability to take your C++ content, if you have any, and run it in Flash Player. So you can take, you know, if you have a game on, I don't know, Xbox or something, and you want to move that and distribute it on Flash Player, you can do that. Um, so the gaming SDK is really all about getting, making it easy to get started. Uh, it's Okay, until the gaming SDK, it may have been a little hard to get started with Flash. There were literally something like 18 steps. I've got a slide with it that's really ugly. But it's 18 steps. We've reduced it to basically three. You, once you've installed the gaming SDK, you just have, and if you have Flash Builder already, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You open a sample that's provided, and you can compile and test. And I'm going to show you actually how to start up a new uh, game and build that real quickly with this, and, and it's much easier than it used to be. So inside the gaming SDK, you have the Air SDK. So whatever version, uh, the next one's going to be 3.8, that comes with it. So you have everything that you need in terms of the actual SDK from Flash that enables this. Uh, you have some open source frameworks that we've assembled. I'm going to talk about those in just a second that all work very well together on top of the technology. You have extensions, so what we call Adobe a &Es, that allow you to go access native capabilities that maybe you don't have access to directly in Flash Player or, or Air. Sorry, I should say Air only. Uh, there's documentation, and then there's a bunch of Adobe Texture Format tools. And you basically can install it on Windows or Mac, as it shows here. So very easy to do. One-click install, standard install process. You get the things installed, and this shows up on your drive. What's in it? The important things are these. So the stack includes all the stuff working together, Starling for 2D GPU accelerated graphics. Okay? The one thing about stage 3D is it's quite complicated at the lower levels. I, I can't interpret really anything in that language. It's called AGAL. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's about textures. And you guys that are graphics developers know all about it. You probably know how to do that. But in, in as a Flash developer, especially those that haven't used Stage 3D, you're used to things like the display list. And Starling is a 2D framework based on that that looks and feels just like you're used to in Flash. And so it makes it easy to build GPU accelerated content. And I'm going to show you that. Away 3D is a 3D environment, open source as well, for building 3D content. I'll, I'll show you just a slide on it. We won't get too detailed in there. Feathers is a UI component structure. I'm going to show you that too. And then we have Dragon Bones. We're going to talk about that today. And the game controllers are all open source frameworks. The game controllers are not open source yet. We wrote it. We're about to open source it. Uh, but that's what's going to allow you with the, to, to easily map in, in different game pads into whatever product, uh, whatever, whatever games you want to support. 
sorry, whatever game pads you'd like to support for your game, easily add them. Um, oh, one thing that's, that's important, we actually support the development, the open source development of all of these products. So we help financially to make sure that all of these things are moving along, developing, maturing, and are, are, are well supported by, by the community as well. And it, it's going quite well. Uh, so Starling, again, GPU, you can see an example there uh, of how to use it. It makes it very straightforward. There's a book. I encourage you to go get it. It's a free, you probably can't read that, but you can download it at O'Reilly, O-R-E-I-L dot L-Y. What does that say? P-P-S-O-H-C. I don't know what that stands for. I don't know why it's like that. But uh, that book is available for free. You can get it. And it's a really nice book that talks about exactly how this works. The uh, Starling Framework URL that's up there will also get you access to a lot of the open source bits that are out there in documentation. Feathers, here's a look at some of the different UIs that people have created. And this is all a skinnable GPU accelerated UI framework that works on top of Flash or Air and lets you uh, build all sorts of uh, uh, UI. And that's feathersui.com. Um, Away 3D, again, lightweight open source 3D framework. Great community uh, contribution going on on that. This is a, this is a game Star Force Delta, that's coming out soon. It's pretty impressive, actually, to play that game. You're flying around in space, and uh, really well done. All done with Away 3D. There's another one, I don't know if you guys have played King's Road. It's a game you can, you can play from Rumble Entertainment. You should go take a look at it. It's a fantastic game. They've used Away 3D as well um, to build that game. Another framework we have is Dragon Bones 2.0. So this is skeletal animation. Do you know what? You guys know what skeletal animation is? It's basically taking, um, well, you can kind of see it here in the bottom left. Bottom left is a typical sprite sheet where kind of, you know, every step of the way you've got like a, like a film strip of your character's movements. So for character animation, you can go with something like a, a sprite sheet or you can use a skeletal animation. You can see the difference in size. On the right-hand side, basically each component is individually just remembered. That's the texture for the right leg, the left leg, the eye. And then the framework puts that all together so you can make it walk. Okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna show you that today. What's important about this is you can, really save, you can really save on resources, particularly GPU memory usage. As you can see, this one right here, 555K, that's one example I'll show you later. And it went down to 47. Uh, kilobytes, and so that uses a lot less memory on the device, makes it much easier to optimize it, and, and works very well with Starling and the frameworks that we have. Uh, something that's coming, we're, we got another release coming very soon, the Gaming SDK 1.2, we're updating all the frameworks, we're updating the Air SDK to 3.8, we're adding Away 3D 4.1, so right now Away 3D is at 4.0, 4.1 adds a bunch of new capabilities, including a new tool, Away Builder. So Away Builder is coming and what Away Builder does is it lets you take content from various 3D modeling tools, their native formats, like, what is it, Max and Maya, pull those in, assemble them into a, into a, a, a layout. So th this picture here that I show, you know, you've got like a tapestry with textures, you've got uh, columns and lamps and all that, that sort of thing. And you pull all that in, you assemble it, and then you export that into the format of Away 3D, and you can you can build your game. So um, it's not an, we don't it it it's a it's a great tool for being able to put together uh, a 3D space and composite that. We're also adding gamepad support for Xbox for Xbox 360 controller very specifically in the gaming SDK 1.2. All right, so that's sort of a quick rundown of where you where we are, what the gaming SDK is, where we are with Flash. And now what we're going to do is we'll, we'll what, the one thing I don't have up here is my, it's a clock. All right, All right let, me get, let me get this up, because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at some code now. First, I want to tell you this. So I'm not going to talk about 3D workflow. That's a complex workflow, uh, and more than what I could do in a session like this. We are going to talk briefly about a 2D workflow. So if you're building a 2D game, Flash is great for 2D games. There's, you know, millions, well, billions of dollars really every year being made and, and transacted around Flash games in the world. And what we have is sort of this, I've, I've built this pipeline of basically five steps, right, that you do in your workflow. You start with the asset creation. How do you create your graphics that you want? What do you use? You can use Photoshop, you can use Illustrator, but most of the time people use Photoshop or they use Flash Professional 
to do that. Um, it sounded like from earlier, a lot of folks here probably use Flash, more than likely use some Flash professional in that. And, and bless you, by the time you have, uh, it moving into this world of stage 3D, you also need to do another step, which is asset preparation. How do I get that thing ready? How do I make it ready for use within stage 3D? Um, we'll talk about what that is. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can prepare that as a sprite sheet and have that all, all those textures put together, which is the right side with Flash. Or you can use Dragon Bones, which also happens to sit inside Flash Pro, and I'll show you that, uh, to prepare that into a skeletal animation. By the time you, once you finish that preparation, you just go and code. Of course, you test. And then you optimize. It optimizes that, that product scout that we talked about. And uh, I'm going to show you. So we're going to go through this whole workflow in the next, how much time do I have? 30 minutes. That's pretty good. We should do that. So first off, what are we making? Uh, so the game that we're going to create, OK, not all of, but most of, is uh, this one. All right, pretty straightforward. This is a simple game, right? I'm not a game developer. Um, so you can see it right in the middle, you got a little dragon. And that dragon is going to be the ball for Pong. So it's dragon bounce is what, what I've called this. And you hit the start button. And I can control the, there's a, I'm, I'm controlling the left, left side. I'm not good at my own game here. All right, so it's a pretty straightforward game. But we're going to go ahead and build it. You can see the, the, uh, the little guys, um, the dragon is running across the screen and, and he's animating. Okay, again, I'm not the greatest animator in the world, but you got the, the idea. He's running, he's moving across, and I built some game logic. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to run through this and we're going to start with those, the, that flow we talked about. So let's go over to asset creation and I'm going to open up Flash Pro. Now in Flash Pro, we have, I have this little dragon. We're going to put, we're going to open him up and there, there he is, all right? And there's a timeline. Now, for those of you that had have, built, have built before, you can see the dragons there. Let me see if I can make this a little smaller. There he is. And every one of his pieces, you can see there's arm left, right. It's basically the skeleton of the dragon, his, his parts. And, on, and across the top here, you have this label. And you see stand, walk, jump, and fall. So, you know, I've... That, as part of the development of this, we put together a little animation for standing, a couple of keyframes, not a lot of tweens, pretty straightforward stuff. Keyframes along the way for standing. He also has walking. Okay, so I'm animating and by moving the timeline back and forth. Then we have jumping, right? So here's the jump sequence. He's kind of just wiggling a little as he goes up in the air and then falling down. All right. Um, so. You can see that when you construct your, your asset, it's pretty much a regular process. You build them in Flash Pro like you probably do today. You add this one label on top and you, you build your animation that way for your character. Once you have it, you can move then into the next step. There's two ways to do it. Again, like I said, you, could do, you can do it the Flash Pro way, which is generate sprite sheet. All right, so that sprite sheet will look something like this. You get a, you get a little user experience here. You can say, oh, I want to use max rectangles. And if you take a look at this, you have all these frames of all the individual animations all put together. Because with stage 3D, you're using, no longer you're using vector graphics. When you go into GPU, the GPU works with pixels. So you have to use bitmap data. And what we're doing is we're putting together the, the textures that may make up all the, 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 the movement of this individual character. Uh, there ends up being 25 frames at 748K in this case. And I could export that, put that on my disk, and I could use that. That's one style of preparation, and that works. Um, you have to do that for each size that you want. You have to create that, scale it, create it for each size. And so one for an iPad, Retina, one for iOS, uh, you know, your iPad, your I iPhone 4, one for Android sizes, and put them all out there, one for the desktop. Uh, you also have another option, which is Dragon Bones. So Dragon Bones offers a design panel here within Flash Pro. It's a plugin, comes with the product when you, or it comes with the open source product when it, you download it, and it actually comes with, because this comes with the gaming SDK, it's there. Uh, I can import this, the selected item. I'm going to pull in this little dragon. Now, look what it does. It's using 
those behaviors that, we, that I showed you a minute ago and showing you how the animations actually play, like that. So that's what he looks like when he's jumping, when he's walking, he basically looks like that. You can see, looks pretty good, smooth animation. And uh, I get that from Dragon Bones. So the framework puts together how to make him move and covers all the tweening in between it, in between, in between the keyframes. The other thing you can do is you can actually change the amount of time it takes for him to walk if you want to. So you could make him a slow walker or you could make him a fast walker. Now this stuff is remembered, so when you export it, you get, you get speeds like this uh, to, to know how much time does it, oh, you can make him a really fast walker too. A little spastic there. So you have a bunch of options for tweaking the behavior right here in this panel. So as a designer, you can create your asset and get it all ready. And then what you do is you export it. Um, I export this in a couple of different formats. I'm going to go ahead and export this uh, a quarter of the size. Put this here in my, uh, come on, right into here. I'm going to call this dragon.25. I'll replace it. And I could also do an export, say, at, at, at half the size that I wanted. So I can, I can choose the different sizes of this character that I want that I want him to be based on what I'm going to be doing and what kind of devices and I can save all those right and now my assets are out here on my file system and you can see what that looks like all right this is 22k so at half the size this one amounts I don't know if you can read that but that's 22 kilobytes this one here tiny little one 12k so that ends up being graphics that take up a lot less space the sprite sheet that got created before was rather large, 767 when you export this sprite sheet. All right, now let's just jump right over here into Flash Builder. This is this is how you now that you've created your assets, you've done your preparation, you have to then code it. So this I'm going to try and run through quick. Um, let me just get to my notes. So in Flash Pro, Press Builder, we're going to create a new ActionScript project. We're going to call this thing Dragon Bounce. All right, set it up. There's an important bit here now that we've got this little, little set up. When you use, uh, when you use Stage 3D, there's an important element of the settings of your game that you need to set, which is on the web, something called params W mode equals direct. I was just talking with a couple of the guys. Apparently, there's some limitations like on Congregate because their website doesn't host this information properly, so you can't build stage 3D games today. Uh, they're going to have to update that. That's an important thing I should tell you. I don't know if you guys saw the announcement, but uh, as of July 9th of this year, we're no longer going to be supporting Flash Player 10. So any Flash Player 10 versions that are out there in the world are going to have to update or they're going to be susceptible to security, uh, se security um, constraints, right? So they, they could be, they could, they could, what's the word I'm looking for? They could be attacked, okay? And we won't be around to, to, to fill the holes. Now, with that announcement's gone out, folks are going to have to update. The minimum version is going to be 11.7. Uh, that's going to be the one we support for another 18 months at the, at the lowest. So that means that everybody is going to have to move to that. And Flash Player 11 will become even more of a default. And that's where Stage 3D exists on the web today. Um, all right, so we get that code in there. That's going to let it run. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just, rather than, I'm just going to talk you through a few of these things rather than just code it up in front of you. So I've got some of the code here created. Let's start with the, the dragon himself, all right? So I don't know if you can see that. Is that ever visible? You guys can read it in the back? All right. So when it comes to the dragon, there's an important thing that you want to use to use this asset. What I've done is I, I break this up into really three minimal things that you need with any Starling game, especially and with Dragon Bones. You need, you need a class to manage the Dragon Bones animated character. So that's the dragon. Right? The Dragon Ball. I'm calling him Dragon Ball. He extends Sprite. This is not the normal Flash Sprite, though. This is a Starling Sprite. So where you're used to using Flash Sprite, you now just modify that and you use everything in Starling. All right, so you've got, you can see I'm using Dragon.5 
that one we just created uh, right here. And we can, that's, I'm embedding that asset that we created. It's interesting that there's a MIME type. Normally with Flash, you don't need to include a MIME type with a PNG, but when you build a prep, you prepare your asset with Dragon Bones, that PNG actually has a bunch of XML embedded in it. So it's not just a plain PNG, but the PNG allows for metadata to be in that format, and that format includes a bunch of uh, XML. All right, now we set up an armature. Uh, we set up a, a factory and a, and a clip, which is just the sprite, and we, we initialize it. Now, the first thing that we do here in, in the main constructor is set up this factory. It's a Starlink factory. This is all part of Dragon Bones right here. We parse the data. Now, this, this, this just uses this bit of asset to create the actual armature. It, invests, it, it looks in, it figures out that what, what all the bones are, what are all the, the things that it needs to use, puts it together, and then when it's done, we can, uh, we can go ahead and build the, build the armature and set up the clip. I, I know I'm walking through this fast. Um, this is the part I want to get to here. With every Dragon Bones component, there's a clock. Okay, so this world clock. And, and the world for this armature I'm creating, I'm just adding this armature into the clock. And that's gonna allow me now to control how fast or how quickly or how slow this guy moves when you want him to move. And every frame, I'm advancing that according to the frame rate right here, all right? And here I put in a, a, basic, a basic movement. And this is the other important thing that I wanted to cover. The armature is his skeleton. He wants to move, we want him to do something. The default I'm making him do is stand. Remember the different behaviors? Stand, walk, jump, and fall. I'm gonna make him stand by default. And so I've made a method just called stand, and all it does is go to and play. So the basic movement to get a, to get a, little, a little animation to run, go to and play. So I'll go to and play and call the name that we, that we built out in Flash Pro. Now we have to wire this into a game. And I'm going to go real quickly here and show you what it looks like. This is, this is, the, this is the main game class. This isn't the main game class. This is the startup. This is kind of the bootstrap class. So anytime you do a, a Starling game, anything with Starling, whether it's a game or not, uh, you, have to, you have to basically initialize it. This is everything you need to know about initializing a Starling game. Just a few lines. You set up your Swift, your frame rate. You extend, in this case, a flash sprite. The very top level is always flash. And then down after that, it goes into Starling. You have a Starling instance. You say, I want to use the bar, star, uh, you give it a class that becomes your main game. And, uh, and you can show stats. I'm going to show that. You'll see this in a second. And then start it up. Simple as that. And then all the logic lives here in this main game. OK? Whenever, you, whenever it's added to stage, you call your stage, if, stage handler. I'm going to go and create the ball. And this is all I do right here. Ball equals new dragon ball. That's this guy that we just created on this side. All right, we add that to the stage. Now, I, I've added some stuff in here to, to do a couple of things with it. But that's pretty much all you have to do. When we run this project, all right, there's, there's the start of this. So with that little bit of code, we now have a dragon is there. I've added this, this particular example includes a feathers component, this button. So that's a GPU accelerated button. In the upper left hand corner, you can see I moved him. I've got a touch on it so that he'll move, move around if I want to. Um, and you can see it's running at 60 frames per second. See how many draw calls. You can see the memory that's being used. I know you can't read that, can you? But it's 60 frames per second, 17, it's using 17K of memory. So it's not much. I can click him. And I can change. His, I built the, the click me to change his animations. Okay. And there you go. So it's pretty straightforward to put together an animation with Dragon Bones and Starling. This took, as you saw, three. Cl this class hasn't even been used. That was something I was back. I backed up. It took three classes. It took a main, cl uh, 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 the starting class, the main class. It took a main game class, and it took an asset for the, for the, for the little uh, dragon. And that was all that was needed. All right. So what I'm going to do now is once once you have your game, 
you want to profile it. So this is interesting. We're going to run the game, the full game again. But first thing I'm going to do is call up Scout. This is Adobe Scout. Now, Adobe Scout is, is a product that basically, for profiling, everything that you need to know about. You don't have to do any instrumentation. With Scout, the Flash Player and Air are all instrumented for you. So if you want to know what's going on, you do nothing in your code to actually have to instrument it to find out what's going on and how it's being used. You just write your code and you run it. And the one thing that you have to do is when you go to compile this in your properties, see this? You probably can't. How do you do that? I can't remember how to zoom in. But this says enable detailed telemetry. So while you're building the product, while you're building your game, you turn on enable detailed telemetry as a compile option. And every time you build and deploy this, whether that be in Flash Player or on Air, and you can do this on your iOS device too. There's a little app you can download called the Scout Companion. You put that on your iOS device, you connect it, it, it wirelessly connects to the, uh, to the computer running Scout. And now as you play your game on iOS, it'll capture all of the information necessary for you to optimize and see what's going on in behavior. Let's watch what it does. I've got this game already, already compiled, ready to run. Scout is sitting here, not doing anything right now. You see, it's got a UI, but there's nothing interesting happening. When I run, get the right thing open. When I run my little game, okay. In fact, let me make one quick change. I think I want to show it to you this way. I'm going to run it in the browser to make it even better. Let's just uh, put this back. I had that running in the standalone player. So real quick, let me just update this. You'd think this is default. It's not. Remember the W mode equals direct? That just basically instructs the player that I'm going to use, I'm going to send everything directly to the GPU now uh, and just take the code as it comes out of, of, of the app. All right, so let's go ahead and run him. That's jumping over here. Now it's in the browser. Now take a look. Just the fact that I ran it, this one, that was the earlier one, you can see it's capturing. Flash Player is just sitting there running. I'm not doing anything particularly with it, but you can see the animation going across the screen. It's actually capturing every frame and all the detail activity that's going on. I'm going to go and play the game. Okay, the dragon's running across the screen. It keeps going. I play this thing until it's five points. I just let the computer win. All right, now we'll close this. Over here, you can see that we captured we captured a whole bunch of timeline data. It just keeps going and going and going. Now that red line that's up there, ah, where to go? Oh, I accidentally closed it. Oh, for heaven's sakes! Sorry about this. This red line here, you, you can, can barely see it, unfortunately, and I closed the panel. All right, all my uh, my scout experts out there, how do you ca call the bright panel back up? Anybody know? Where'd it go? If I didn't close it, where did it go? Is this it? Frame time. It's not the view that I'm used to seeing. You can tell it's not. I'm, I'm not an expert in this guy. Um, well, what you see right here. Relaunch this. Sorry. We'll go ahead and start the game up again and re record that. And with any luck, it's still down. It's still gone. I'm missing a view. All right. Well, What it shows you is this red line. This red line that it represents your uh, it represents your overhead. So the red line represents your your 
your frame rate. I want it to be 60 frames per second. Any time that the frame rate of your game actually jumps, jumps above 60 frames per second, you'll see that in this, in this grid view. Unfortunately, I can't show you the view. I don't know where it went, but you see all these little lines? These little, <laughs> you can't even see it. I apologize. Um, I can't show it to you. Well, that is a bummer. I can't get it back. Normally what you do is you can select the space that you want and it'll show you all sorts of detail and I can't get it up so I apologize. Um, all right, so there you go. Y you can do it. I just can't, apparently. Um, you guys can probably figure it out a lot better than me. There's a lot of information. This thing will tell you exactly which action strip classes are in use. You get the entire stack trace. You're able to go and look into the details of how the classes and everything, how it's using memory, how it's taking up frame rate, and what's happening. Uh, there's a new feature coming out, it's called uh, Advanced Memory. You'll be able to actually t look into the, the full memory and look at what allocations and deallocations are happening in memory at any given frame. That's happening June 19th, I think that's, hap that's coming out. All right, all these products are available. Uh, let's see. I went through all this already. How do you get all of it? You guys familiar with the Creative Cloud? Adobe Creative Company, we've introduced something called the Creative Cloud. The Creative Cloud is available as a subscription. Basically, every single Adobe product, right? So whether that be Photoshop, uh, Premiere, InDesign, it's all available at monthly cost as a, as a subscription. Um, the things that I showed you today, with the exception of Flash Pro and Builder, are all free. The Gaming SDK, Scout, it's free. So you can go and just log in to creative.adobe.com you can get access to all these tools with an Adobe, uh, Adobe ID, and these are all free. So you can see the ones that, are, that, that, that show up there. The free ones are Scout, Gaming SDK, and Flash, C++, our Flash compiler. You can get all those things without having to pay anything, and you can build, you can build these games. Um, <clears throat> this is what it looks like. So you can also get Flash Pro, of course, from there, and Flash Builder 4.7. Now, come June 19th, June 19th, I think, we're launching the Creative Cloud, so a, an additional version of this where everything comes through the web, through the Creative Cloud. There's new releases coming out of all the products, including Flash Pro CC um, and uh, Adobe Scout, which has the new, memory, the new memory profiling coming up. All right, you can also go to gaming.adobe.com. We have a showcase in there, by the way, and if you guys have built any Flash games on, and deployed them as either Air or Flash and you want to get them showcased, send me an email at bhoward.adobe.com. I can add the game in there. And we can we can get that shown for the for folks to see. All right. So any questions aside from how do you get that panel to display that I accidentally shut in uh, in Scout? <clears throat> five minutes. So if you have any questions? We've got five minutes for questions. Oh, you, I guess. Um, you showed the the UI tool path yeah. for the for the workflow. Uh huh. Um, how does the process work for a command line for automated build process? I was just, we're having trouble with building. We, we use this pretty extensively, and we're having trouble doing command line builds. Which for, particular? Uh, we're using Gradle, actually, so. Oh, for doing uh, like, like, like wh air builds, flex builds on, for the Swift. You're, use, you're, you're using flex? Yes. We're, so internally, we're using air, sorry, the air, right. the air SDK. Uh -huh. And um, we're having trouble getting it to build from the command line as opposed to it builds fine in Flash Builder. Is there anything weird we need to do there? Or is it just? Shouldn't be. It should support okay. pretty much from the command line. If you're having a particular issue, shoot me an email with exactly what the issues are, what the problem you're having, because uh, the command line build should work. Okay. Um, in fact, Flash Builder just uses behind the scenes the yeah. command line. So We've done that for other projects, and it's worked fine. It's just this new version seems a little odd for us. So, could be something. Uh, just it, is it related? Uh, is it a flex project? No, it's an air project. It, it's just pure air. And okay. it runs on web and both mobile devices. So it's yeah, nice. it, should, it should command line compile fine. If you're having any issues, there might be something I need to address. But, but why don't you send me what, what the particular issue is or what, you know, what you're doing, and we'll see if we can get that worked out. Behoward at adobe.com. Yeah, sorry, I don't. I, it should work. Bottom line is it should be supported. So if it used to work and it stopped, maybe if there's a bug in there I need to address. Yep. Anything else? Yeah, down front here. Uh, so 
want to ask uh, about the Air SDK on Android. Yeah. Uh, I saw it on the slide that it said that uh, it do not need to install the runtime external. The SDK. shared runtime. Uh, yeah. That I I remember that I need to install it separately before I can play the game. So Air can deploy, and hopefully this answers your question. Uh, Air can deploy in one of two modes, right? On Android, oh. on iOS there's only one mode, which is oh. what we call captive runtime. iOS has a limitation, right? Apple doesn't let you build something like what we have, interpreting one language into something native, without doing that all in advance, okay? And compiling it all into the game uh, or into the app. Oh. With Android, that limitation isn't there. So you have the option of using the shared runtime, which means that Air 3.8, 3.7, or whatever, runs as an app on the device. The user has to download it once, and anybody that has a, sh has a game that uses a shared runtime just uses that most recent version. So that reduces your file size significantly, because the, the error of shared runtime is already up there. Um, but there's another option. The difficulty there and the, 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 the problem is, well, OK, once in a while, we break the shared runtime. <laughs> right? So we're busy making updates and new features. It's quite a complex thing. And we test, we have a significant amount of testing. But once in a while, a feature will break something in the past. We might break your game, right? Because your game's deployed depending on something we're updating. Yes. So if you want to protect yourself from that, you can also choose to deploy as a captive runtime. That takes the runtime, shoves it in. Your game is 100% self contained, right? You're in control of how and when it gets updated. You're not worrying about Adobe. You can choose to upgrade that whenever you see fit. Um, <clears throat> so that now with 3.7, that is the default state. So whenever you build an Android app with 3.7, it ends up being a captive by default. If you want shared runtime for some reason, I can give you, I can give you an email with some directions to go to, to do that. We'll allow it, but it's just that we prefer you guys to use the captive because it, 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 it's, it It'll free you up significantly. But if you want to share runtime, you can still do it. But it's just not the default anymore. Uh, can I use it only in uh, 4.7 version? Uh, can I uh, compile to in two mode, in only in Fat Builder 4.7 version? Uh, can you compile it into in other, uh, older version? Can I compile in? Uh, yeah, Flash Builder 4.7 can use whichever Air SDK you want. Yes. So it's the Air SDK that controls how it gets packaged. So you can use Flash Builder, no problem. But if you use Air because, SDK, uh, I haven't installed uh, that new version yet. I use of 3.7 Air SDK. I yes. use the uh, yeah. 4.5. <coughs> okay, so then you're still. So I, I wonder if this version can uh, do like you said. 4.5. Uh, I don't think 4.5 can use the the SDK 3.7 right now. Okay. You'll need to upgrade. Okay, thank okay. you. And then, or you could use command line. You can from the command line for, for free without getting the air, the getting Flash Builder. You can you can command line compile that if it works, uh, <laughs> as it should, and you'll end up with your your app on the other side of it. Thank you very much. Either way you want. One last question. Anybody else have a question? <laughs> um, uh, one other question. Our design team would like to deliver uh, certain animations, call it an intro scene or whatever, as sure. a, just as a Swift, because that's their standard workflow. Yep. Uh -huh. How do <laughs> animation Swifts work with the Starling framework? Because they're, it's, it's, not a, it's not a Starling sprite. So how yeah, do, you how can do still do that. So um, you can intermix this stuff. And, and basically, you're, go yeah, you're going into a cutscene that would allow you to do that and run that Swift. Now, the difficulty in the past has been loading that Swift up, Swift up might provide you some issues on iOS. We have a new feature that lets you have multiple Swifts, as long as you have that Swift in advance. So when you compile it, you can, you can let the art, art team create that Swift on their own, give it to you when you package it up, and it'll take and, and, and strip out all the code. Because with iOS, there's a limitation. You can't arbitrarily load code, right? So that Swift can be at compile time. Your architecture can have multiple Swifts. It'll all get compiled into one main Swift, and then the assets kept into individual Swifts separately still. So we support that with 3.6 and 7, um, and uh, 3.6 and, and beyond. So you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have any issues. It can be done. 
Um, I don't have an example for you how to do it, but you can combine the two. So you can have a Starling base for all the animation. You could switch over and just show a standard displayless Swift running. And that sits just on top of Stage 3D. That's where that would be. The, this, only the Starling stuff sits on top of Stage 3D. No, I mean, yeah, we're saying the same thing differently. The, okay. the design team Swift that's a flash-based Swift loader right. would be above. Yeah, it's not going to use Stage 3D. 3D. It's going to use the old displayless rendering, but it'll run. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we have like a one, one question in the back. So. <coughs> but it's going to be the last one, though. Uh, for the GPU side, are we allowed to use our own uh, shader? Your own shader? Yeah, shader programs or things like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it just needs to. It won't work with Starling. You need to be. You'll be just writing in Agal, the shader language inside Agal. Agal is Adobe Graphic Assembly language, and you can put your own shaders in there. Like, uh, if you originally is using CGFX, are we able to? couldn't tell you. Why don't you come talk to me afterwards and I'll take a note. I'll find out. Okay, thank you, Bill. All right. Thank you, guys.